Would you like to accelerate your career and reach your full potential in just minutes a day? Welcome to the LeadX Show with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. Are your goals just too small? Hello, everyone. Kevin Cruz here, helping you to achieve your full potential five days a week. And in just a minute, we're going to talk about chasing big dreams. But first, don't forget to visit leadx.org, where you'll find great articles from dozens of the best executive coaches and leadership gurus out there. That's leadx.org. Our guest today is the lead pastor of National Community Church, recognized as one of the most innovative churches in America, with eight locations in Washington, D.C. He is also the New York Times bestselling author of The Circle Maker, and his new book is Chase the Lion. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. Our guest is Mark Batterson. Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much, Kevin. Really looking forward to talking about Chase the Lion in just a minute. But Mark, first, will you share with us a time when you actually failed and what did you learn from it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've pastored a church here in D.C. for 20 years and the Lord has blessed it. But uh, my first attempt was a complete failure. <laughs> I, I was 22 years old and it's amazing how much you think you know when you're 22. Uh, I, uh, I thought I... I thought I was ready to plant a church, and uh, I guess I wasn't because despite the fact that I had a 25-year plan, Kevin, it, it we fell flat on our faces. But here's what I learned. I learned that the cure for the fear of failure is not success. I think it's failure in small enough doses that you build up an immunity to it. And so it's almost like God used that to set me free and then reposition us from Chicago to Washington, D.C., and I, I guess the rest is history. Well, that's great, and I didn't know that about your your history and and uh, starting out in Chicago. That's interesting. Well, it, uh, it was a, a rough start, and we had to risk failing twice to go for it again, but, you know, I honestly wouldn't trade it. Um, I, I think we learn our best lessons. In fact, I, I like saying that— uh, uh, success is well-managed failure, and I think uh, <laughs> failure is usually poorly managed success. At least that's my take on it. I love your take, and I, when I was in my 20s, I blew up two different companies, and uh, I, I often <laughs> say back when I was young and dumb, but I just as you said, I wouldn't trade that for anything, and I think I had to get through that to set me up for some, uh, some better times ahead. So, Mark, your, your new, new book is Chase the Lion. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small. And your inspiration for the book came from 2 Samuel 23, the story of Benaiah, who is a lesser known figure in the Bible. So let's start there. Who is Benaiah? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's buried about six feet deep in the Old <laughs> Testament. And uh, he, he, uh, the Bible says that he chased the lion into a pit on a snowy day and killed it. In my opinion, Kevin, that's about the coolest verse in the Bible. <laughs> you know, if you're in a pit with a lion on a snowy day, you, you've got a problem, probably the last problem you'll ever have. But in this instance, uh, somehow Benaiah kills the lion and uh, actually becomes King David's bodyguard and later on becomes commander in chief of Israel's army. But I, I think it traces back to this moment. Are, are you going to run away from what you're afraid of or are you going to run to the roar? It's really two different ways of living. I think you can let fear dictate your decision. And if you do, you're going to run away from a lot of things. You're going to be running your entire life. But uh, I think there comes a moment when uh, if you feel like God's giving you a green light, sometimes you've got to go for it. Now, you got to pray about it. you got to do your homework. But uh, at the same time, I think you got to go after that dream that God's put in your heart. And this is amazing because I think the key part, as you say, it's he chased the lion into the pit. It wasn't he fell into a pit with a lion and survived. He chased the lion. And so, as you say, you have a whole chapter you know, called Run to the Roar. And I, I laughed when I read it because you say you have to be a little bit crazy to run to the roar. So what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I don't want people to think of me as normal. I, I don't know about <laughs> you, but normal is a little bit of an insult to me. Uh Go ahead and call me crazy. I, I found that when God calls us to do things, 
Uh, oftentimes, I call it the crazy test. Listen, it's going to be bigger than you are. It's going to be beyond your resources, beyond your ability, often beyond your education. But God just seems to love to use people uh, that are unqualified. And so uh, maybe a way of saying it is that he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And so I think it's this idea that I'm not going to play defense with my life. I don't want to get overly theological, but there are sins of commission, and it's doing something you shouldn't have done, and I'm against those, but there are also sins of omission, and it's what you would have, could have, and should have done, and I think that's what grieves the heart of our Heavenly Father, and so in a sense, potential is God's gift to us, and then what we do with it is our gift to God. So. Kevin, this is more than just a little mantra, you know, chase the line. It's more than a book title. It really is uh, the motto of my life, and I think it's a way of life. It's playing offense with your life. Yeah, and Mark, this is going off script a little bit, but you just made me remember something when I was reading your book that (laughs) about playing defense with your life, and this is a true story. You know, I was raised by very conservative parents and everything was about, you know, raising me to be polite and and saying thank you and uh, never breaking a rule. Like it was very controlled. And I can remember, I think it was the seventh grade, I had a social studies teacher and he did a, um, it was a game. It was like a simulation for the class over weeks where it was a, a simulated town. And some of us were poor people. Some of us were rich people. We could gamble, we could get jobs, all this stuff. And then at the end, we reported on our life as a citizen in this game. And I, you know, was a average citizen and had a few dollars in the bank and thought I did pretty good in the game. And I think he almost failed me and I was a good student. And I was so hurt by that and angry and thought it was unfair. And his teaching to the class out was the ones who got the A's, it wasn't the ones that had the most money in the bank or the least money. It was the ones who played the game, who had who had fun, who did everything. And look, it's a lot of years later, and I still remembered that lesson. And he was the first one that kind of gave me that message that was not one I was necessarily hearing at home. You know, playing life on offense rather than defense. I think that's great. Yeah. Kevin, I don't I don't think I had a teacher quite that creative. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it interesting? That seems to me like one of the parables that, that Jesus taught, you know, this parable of the talents where, you know, the, the one person buries it in the ground. They play it safe. Right. And uh, I, I think playing it safe in God's kingdom is risky. And uh, and 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 the opposite is true as well, that you. Uh, you know, God has called us to step out in faith and take some risks. And so, wow, that's quite a class and quite a teacher. Yeah, certainly made a mark on me. And your book, Chase the Lines, certainly there's a lot of stories from the Bible. There's also a lot of stories just from history and, and your own life. And listeners, there's a lot of humor. Uh, I'm, I was laughing out loud quite a bit as I read Chase the Lion. And you know, one of the stories, Mark, which I had never heard before, you tell the story of Arthur Guinness opening a brewery in, of course, Dublin, Ireland, and he signed a lease for 9,000 years. So tell us a little bit about that. What's the relevance of that story? Well, it's this idea of thinking long. Uh, I don't think you can dream big if you don't think long. And and here's where I might zoom out, Kevin, and just, just remind us that what God does for us is never just for us. It's always for the next generation. He's the God of three generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so we think right here, right now, but I think God is thinking nations and generations. And so I'm motivated by this idea of what am I doing today that's going to make a difference 100 years from now? Now, now Guinness was thinking 9,000 years out. But uh, I think this idea of thinking long is a very biblical idea. In fact, we need to think of everything in light of eternity. And so there is no longer perspective than that. And uh, my guess is if listeners are discouraged as it relates to their dream, uh, it's probably in part because it's not happening as quickly or as easily as they want. And I would just remind them that 
you know, we tend to overestimate what we can do in a year or two, but we underestimate what God can do in 10 or 20 or 100 years. And so I think the importance there is to think long. Well, and I love that phrase, nations and generations. And, you know, I was just rereading a chapter, I think it was this morning, Mark, where you talk about a dream within a dream within a dream. And and in your own life, you know, the origins of your own success and dreams going back several generations. And, you know, I've been sort of a serial entrepreneur, it's no no accident that my father, you know, tried to start several several businesses of his own. I mean, it, it, it isn't just one life. It isn't just one dream. Yeah. And that that's such a beautiful thing. Now, you know, I don't have time to totally set up that idea, but uh, it is an idea I take from the, the movie Inception, but it actually comes from an Edgar Allan Poe poem from a, over 150 years ago, this idea of a dream within a dream. And it's it's such a beautiful thing when you read scripture and then when you even look at your own life, um, listen, your dream really is a dream within someone else's dream, which is a dream within someone else's dream. And I think it goes back to creation itself, that we are part of this dream that God had, both his creative dream and the dream of redemption. And so I think uh, readers are going to love, I think, that idea and that part of the book. And it helps me remember, Kevin, that whatever God does for me or in me, I hope my dream sets someone else up uh, to dream their dream. And and that's really what you see when you look at Benaiah and King David and his mighty men. And of course, that's the, the passage that I really deep dive into uh, in Chase the Line. That's great. And I think <laughs> I think our listeners would be surprised to learn, Mark, that your church actually runs a coffee shop. Many of your locations are in movie theaters, and one location is actually right next to a gentleman's club. And a lot of this is on purpose. So why? Why these locations? Well, one of our core values is that the church belongs in the middle of the marketplace. You know, when I read the book of Acts, I don't see Paul standing outside the Areopagus and boycotting. I see him (laughs) walking in and competing for the truth. And, uh, of course, Dionysius and Damaris are are two people who are probably grateful that he did. So my philosophy, Kevin, is let's criticize by creating. Let's write better books. Let's produce better films. Let's start better businesses. Let's draft better legislation. Come on, let's do it better with the help of the Holy Spirit. Criticize by creating. So before we wrap up, Mark, I always like to challenge our listeners to get just a little bit better every day. Can you challenge us to do something today, right away? Yeah, you know, I think this idea of running to the roar, I, I might just take a moment to uh, share the manifesto that it's that's right at the beginning of the book, Kevin. You know, quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death run to the roar, set God-sized goals, pursue God-given passions, go after a dream that's destined to fail without divine intervention, stop pointing out problems, become part of the solution, stop repeating the past, start creating the future, face your fears, fight for your dreams, grab opportunity by the maid and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and last day of your life. Burn sinful bridges, blaze new trails, Live for the applause of nail-scarred hands. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail. Dare to be different. Quit holding out. Quit holding back. Quit running away. Chase the lion. Wow. Quite a manifesto. Mark, where's the best way our listeners can find out more about you and the church? Well, I, I hang out on Twitter at Mark Batterson and uh, have the website by the same name. And uh, we're theaterchurch.com. If uh, anybody wants to uh, tune into one of our podcasts, would certainly uh, welcome it. And anybody that's in the D.C. area, certainly want to extend a, a welcome to them. And of course, Kevin, that includes you. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Mark, thanks for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Hey, joy and privilege. Thanks so much.
All right, friends, you've just spent time with the great Mark Batterson. Don't forget, you can get the links he mentioned and notes from this interview over at leadx.org. You can get Mark's book, Chase the Lion, from Amazon.com or your favorite bookstore. And one more thing, listeners, if you've gotten even one new idea, if you feel a little bit more motivated right now, then I encourage you to go onto iTunes, subscribe to the Lead X show, and just leave an honest review. Until next time, remember... Leadership isn't about a title or power or authority. It's about influence. I am a leader. You are a leader. We are all leaders. The question is, who are you going to lead today? 